Alright everyone, today we have an A1932 that does not turn on. This is ticket number 6714. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alright, we're going to go ahead and plug in the USB-C port and see what we're getting. So it looks like we are getting 20 volts and 0 0.06. So it's going through a little bit of cycling and communication here. But this is basically means we're stuck at 20 volts and 0 0.06 amps. Let's go ahead and check the other port. And unfortunately, on these uh, T2 machines, they are, um, this is a very, very non-specific finding, and it could mean pretty much anything. Basically, what this means when we have this 20 volt 0 0.06, 0 0.05, it basically just means that uh, BridgeOS is not loading for whatever reason, or we have an issue right after BridgeOS is loading. So it's either BridgeOS is not booting, or somewhere right after between BridgeOS booting and the Intel power sequence starting up, we have an issue. So let's go ahead and get the board out and let's check it. Now, also, we did check to see if this machine was in recovery mode. That should be your first step if you get one that's 20 volts, 0 0.03, 0 0.08 or so. It is not in recovery mode. So let's go ahead and pull the board out and have a look. All right, and the very first thing we want to do is a very thorough visual inspection. I want to look at everything. I want to see if someone else has been here. I want to see if there's any capacitors that look off, anything of the sort. We're looking for anything and everything. So. It's pretty common for an issue on PP3V3S5 to cause this issue. Um, well I wouldn't say it's common, but it does happen. But these capacitors have like scratches on them. So someone has been poking around here for sure. See that? So there, this has probably went to another repair shop. So already I'm on guard here. So, you know, we should have those red flags going off. There's scratches on capacitors. That means someone else has been in this device before not necessarily a good thing again right here see those scratches those marks on those resistors someone has been there um, very clearly someone has been working on this before um, but I don't see any flux anywhere it doesn't look like anyone's actually done work on it they just probed around CDs look fine over here looks fine Definitely some probe marks near the PMU. More probing there. And it also looks kind of like this shield has been removed. So I want to take off and make sure our T2 or NANDs have not been reflown. If our T2s or NANDs have been reflown, then that's where we say, you know what, we're done here. But luckily, it does not look like that's the case. That looks uh, very good. So yeah, those look fine. OK, so let's start going over this. Not in recovery mode, 0 0.06, the most sensitive diagnostic method is going to be thermal imaging. Um, it is highly, highly specific to finding you know, faults on these boards. So you, know, you could have one little short capacitor on a side rail, so something like that. Thermal imaging is the first and foremost uh, most sensitive method to determining a fault on these boards. So let's go ahead and do a th little thermal overview on this. Um, and it's going to be a, like a pre-recorded, then we'll go over the findings after because the thermal imager does not like when OBS is open, so I cannot record it via OBS. But we're going to go ahead and have a look and see if there's any abnormal findings on the thermal. All right, so unfortunately, thermal imaging showed nothing. Nothing worth showing you guys. It was completely normal. Nothing wrong whatsoever. So now we got to do the hard work. we got to see if we could find out what's going on. So let's go to the microscope and let's start uh, probing around. So when you have a board that's, you know, 20 volts, 0 0.03, 0 0.06, it typically means that um, BridgeOS is getting stuck somewhere, okay? It's, it's not booting properly. And this could be you know, um, could be caused by a multitude of factors. You could have a bad T2, you could have a bad NAND, you could have a power rail somewhere um, that's causing issues. So I'm just going to probe around a little bit. I'm just going to probe common areas that may be short. Um, PP3V3S5 could be a culprit, so I'll just check that. And yeah, we're in the mega ohms, so it's not that. I'll just go around to our 
um, some of our SSD power rails right here and mega ohms again um, again someone has definitely been here so this already lowers our success rate that's 10 ohms there but that can be normal um, because it is our T2 our T2 has a very low resistance to ground so let's open up a board view for an 82001598 it's been a while since I worked on this board actually it's usually it used to be a really common one to get in and they um, um, sorry, not 1958, uh, 1521. Again, it's been a while since I worked on one of these boards. They used to come in a lot, but I honestly feel like people don't really, like, this machine sucked. I have to say, like, reliability-wise, it was fine, but overall, this machine um, was very low-powered for what it was. I believe even the... Um, previous generation 2017 MacBook Air had a faster CPU than this, so it's not a very good machine. And we're in the kilo ohms on our Sleep S2R, which is good. Um, our PMU VDD main is still high resistance. Um, so now I'm just going to check some voltages real quick. I want to see if we're getting our SSD power and our SSD power is going to be supplied by our PMU and um, a voltage regulator at the top of the board, U9060. Um, so we're going to check and see if we have voltage to our NAND. And if we don't have voltage to our NAND, we need to figure out why, because BridgeOS cannot boot if we don't have voltage to our NAND. So it should show up on our bottom rail here. We have 1.8 volts. And our top one over here, we have 0.9 volts, that's good. And right over here, I have 2.5 volts, so we are getting power to our NAND. So we should be booting BridgeOS, but we're not for some reason. Um, now, how I like to describe this sometimes, too, is this is essentially like an iPhone holding at the Apple logo, because the T2... The T2 subsystem is basically an iPhone, okay? That's basically an iPhone on um, the MacBook board that needs to work. And this is essentially like an iPhone that's stuck at the Apple logo. It's not doing anything. Um, so we're going to check. Uh, I just want to see if PP33S5 is present first. Um, that's our like next rail in the power sequence after BridgeOS is booted. And sometimes... Sometimes you could have issues with it that presents in a way um, that will, uh, will will look a lot like this, and it'll actually be a short or uh, PP3V3S5 would be absent. So there's a few areas that this will show up on the board. I'm looking for really easy to probe spot, and it looks like right about here would be good. So we have a few components. Right here, and that is zero volts. Now that may simply mean that we're just not there in the power sequence, but I also want to check for a short. And there is no short to ground there. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the power sequence from this board, and we're going to poke around on the power sequence. Okay, and we could see here, so we're just going to go down. We know we're getting this. We went, we checked, we skipped ahead, and we are not getting PP3V3S5. So the next thing I'm going to look, I'm going to check and see if we have PMU on off L. It's a signal win low. So if if signal win low, if this is pulse, then we'll get our next rail. So if this is missing, um, we're, yeah, sorry about that. Um, there we are. Uh, so PMU on off L. So if, if this is triggered by either the charger being plugged in, hitting the power button, hitting any key on the keyboard, etc., if this pulse is low, we will get PP3V3S5 and so on. But I want to see if there's even 3.3 volts to make this happen. So I'm going to go ahead and check that, and we're going to go from there. And one, one other thing to point out before we move on, um, you can see here, um, right here, SSD enabled H9M, which is the T2 booted to GOS. GOS is BridgeOS. So right there, that means we're booting BridgeOS. So we want to check... Um, NAND reset L and PMU on off L to see if we're getting there. So let's do that now. And NAND reset L is actually going to show up right above where we just measured. So it's going to show up on this resistor right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And we're going to see if we have voltage there. And 
see what's up. Then we'll check PMU on off L. This may very well be a case of firmware corruption, or we have a, could have a bad PMU or a bad T2. Um, I have seen bad PMUs on this device a few times. All right, so we're 20 volt, 0 0.04, and NAND reset L is present. Now let's check PMU on off L. PMU on off L. And at this point, I never recommend forcing a device into bridge or into DFU unless um, it's our, our last resort. And we may come to a point like if, if PMU on off L is present, then something's up but for PP33S5 to be missing. It could be a bad PMU or it could be the T2 not communicating right to the PMU. And I do have 3.3 volts on PMU on off L. So basically, uh, the board is being triggered to turn on. And one thing I'm going to actually do is watch our power output if I trigger that. One more time. And it doesn't change. So essentially, that signal is not doing anything. So at this point, um, the what I would say is we've ruled out most everything on the board level. We did thermal imaging. We don't have a short. We're getting to the end of the power sequence. So what's fair is we put this in DFU mode and we attempt to revive and go from there. Now, revive could either complete successfully. If revive completes successfully, that means everything in our T2 subsystem and our NANs are okay in the issues on the Intel side. If it does not complete successfully, it'll probably give us an error that will lead us down the right path or tell us that our SSD is dead. Um, we'll go from there and then see what happens. Another possibility is this PMU right here. That could be bad, um, and I've seen that happen before. So we will see. Um, if our T2, if our revive does complete successfully, maybe our, T2, our PMU is bad and not outputting um, our PCH power rails, which will take us to the next phase in the power sequence. Anyway, like I said, we've pretty much ruled out everything we can uh, for right now, so I am going to force this into DFU, and we will see what happens. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a shot, and we'll be back in a minute. Now, this board's a little tricky because it doesn't have the pads like uh, many of our other boards do that we can just solder wire directly across. So we have to take from this probe point right here, Let's get a little tin on that, a little bit of solder, and we're going to run that over to our Sleep 1V8 S2R capacitors adjacent. So uh, you may ask, why don't I just do the keyboard combination? Well, I could, but I ultimately feel like this is more reliable. So we're just going to run a little wire, um, and furthermore, it keeps it into DFU mode when if you power cycle it or anything, um, it will come out of DFU mode. This will keep it into DFU mode as long as I need it to be. So we're just going to get that there. Come on. There we go. And right over here. This is an ammo wire, so we don't have to worry about it going across anything. Like so. That's good. Um, all right. We're going to go to our Mac Mini and see what happens. All right. And after the DFU revive, um, we see here it did actually boot up. Now, this is rare. I will say this. This is rare. And I never just force a board into DFU uh, in order to try and solve a no power issue because if you have any issues with like your SSD circuit and you do that, you can actually cause the machine to lose its partition map, costing the person their data. So in this case, we looked at all other board related causes. We had power to our SSD. We did not have any short circuits. We were at the end of the power sequence and it didn't really make sense why BridgeOS wasn't booting. So it was a fair step to force it into DFU and attempt a firmware revive to reinstall BridgeOS. And it worked. It turns on and works now. Um, let's say if it, it, give it gave us an error 6 on the DFU uh, revive, that could mean a bad SSD, or it might have given us error 4014, and that's usually a T2 RAM issue. So it can be used as a diagnostic method only when you're at the end of the road for troubleshooting. So that one's fixed. All good to go, um, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Hope you learned something.